Hello, in this week's video discussion, we'll be discussing historical literacy. Using the History Jerry Falwell Library database, I located the America's Historical Imprints database, which features the Charles Evans and Shaw Shoemaker document collections. From there, I was able to find two primary sources that could enhance a historical presentation of early American history. The United States attempted to remain neutral during the Napoleonic period, but eventually became embroiled in the European conflicts, leading to the War of 1812 against Great Britain. The two primary sources are, quote, are titled The Pride of Britannia Humbled, uh, published in 1817 by William Cobbett, and Lewis Goldsmith's The Secret History of the Cabinet of Bonaparte, including his private life, character, domestic administration, and his conduct to foreign powers, published in 1810. Using these two primary sources, I was able to show how the War of 1812, also known as Mr. Madison's War, was in fact an extension of the Napoleonic Wars that were ravaging Europe from the late 1790s through 1815. Uh, William Cobbett was a British political reformer, journalist, and champion of the traditional English rural lifestyle. He spent considerable time in political exile in the United States during his career in public life. Following the passage of some of the political reforms he championed, he was elected to Parliament, where he served in the last few years of his life. Louis Goldsmith was an Anglo-French publicist of Portuguese-Jewish extraction, educated in London, that began his career in the service of Napoleon and the French revolutionary cause against Britain. Later, following the prevailing political winds, he shifted his allegiance to the pro-royalist camp and became a vocal supporter of the restoration of the Bourbon dynasty and an outspoken critic of Napoleon. Uh, with the final restoration of Louis XVIII in 1815, Goldsmith was rewarded with a pension for life. Within both primary sources, the author's biases are evident, particularly Goldsmith's. Uh, Cobbett's writings are supportive of the American cause in the War of 1812, while Goldsmith uh, luridly denounces Napoleon. Cobbett defends President Madison and the American government from charges of enforcing conscription, quote, that will subject the people to barbarous hum humiliation, end quote, by comparing it to the levee en masse system Napoleon had inherited from revolutionary France and used to great effect in creating his Grand Armée, uh, page 48 of Cobbett's book. Cobbett holds the Duke of Wellington in high esteem and proffers his interdiction as the only way for the British war effort to succeed. Quote, Eight months ago, the Duke of Wellington, with his army, might have fallen like a thunderbolt upon the Washington cabinet leaving them no time for conscriptions, no means of collecting French officers to discipline their troops, no opportunity to intrigue for friendship and support among the continental powers of Europe. It is not yet too late for striking a decisive blow, but that blow must be struck with all our heart and with all our strength. Page 45 of Cobbett's book. Cobbett predicted correctly that the War of 1812 would destroy the Federalist as a political party. Quote, I confess that the Federalist in general would be put down forever by a peace with Mr. Madison, on terms honorable to America, made at this time, and which peace would clearly have been obtained by the wisdom of his measures and the bravery of those whom he has employed. Page 57. Cobbett attacks the New England Federalists, comparing them to Russian Cossacks, and riskfully calling them the chaplains of the Cossacks, and sometimes the Cossack priesthood for offering, quote, solemn fast and thanksgivings on account of the entrance of the Cossacks into Paris and of the fall of Napoleon, page 59. Cobbett spends roughly 30 pages defending Napoleon's efforts, supporting religious liberty during his time in power while criticizing the Federalist support of the reactionary powers of the Sixth Coalition. One must look at Goldsmith's thesis extremely critically because it was written by a political opportunist with clear motives and relies extensively on hearsay and rumor that the author himself may have invented with few reputable sources. Among the charges, Goldsmith accused Napoleon of attempting to, quote, have the King of England assassinated, and that he, that he was to be shot in the park. Page 233 of Goldsmith's, Goldsmith's book. Goldsmith also, <coughs> excuse me, Goldsmith also spent several pages accusing Napoleon of trying to reclaim the Louisiana Territory with force from the United States. Quote, in the year 1802, measures had begun to be taken to send a powerful French army to Louisiana, 
for the covert purpose of overhauling the government of the United States and supporting the intrigues of France for its subversion. Page 145. According to Goldsmith, during negotiations between Napoleon and the other great powers of Europe, Napoleon offered to support British attempts to reconquer America. Quote, let her, England, try and recover America, and I will assist. I will assist her by sending 50,000 men to Louisiana. End quote from page 145 of Goldsmith. Ironically, Goldsmith states, quote, that no English administration, whether Whig or Tory, would ever think of disturbing the internal peace and tranquility of the United States. Page 146. Uh, concluding with his discussion of Napoleon's plans for Louisiana and the United States, he surmises, quote, I can state from authority that if Joseph Bonaparte succeeds in Spain and is or is not recognized by the American government, he will declare the sale of Louisiana to have been uh, null in the first instance on the ground that Spain had no right to sell it to France. Consequently, the Americans will be obliged to give it back again. Page 245. Thank you.